Hello Pyrobit users, uh, this is Esan. Uh, in this video I want to show you how to use the Make Pattern tool to create detail and model patterns in Revit. Um, the tool exists under the basically Pyrobit tab, Modify Panel, and under Edit, and here is the tool, Make Pattern, and it's got a tooltip on it that describes um, what it does. Um, I want to show you basically how to create both model and detailed patterns in this video. The file that I have already open is the test file that I used when I was developing this tool uh, to create you know, simple and more complex type of um, patterns and basically test out how the tool works. Uh, the, this file exists under the my Make Pattern bundle basically. If you hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the Make Pattern tool, uh, you'll get this uh, tool opened in your Windows Explorer that basically um, points to the to the bundle folder. Inside the bundle folder there's this test folder that contains this Revit, uh, Revit test file. Um, you can you can open it, it's made with Revit 2017 so uh, you can open it with any version after that and uh, this file has only three different views in it which is a 3D view, a drafting test view and a model test view. Model test view is obviously for model patterns, the drafting test is for drafting patterns and the 3D shows you an example of using this pattern, these patterns on a um, 3D object. The face of this wall has the model pattern and the cross section of it has the um, uh, one of the created detail, detail patterns. <coughs> um, so if you go to the model tests, uh, from top to bottom I have a series of very simple patterns that basically I used to when I was developing the tool to make sure that I get uh, you know correct angles and positioning and stuff like that on all the on all the um, patterns. Um, I'm going to browse, uh, actually scroll down to, let's say, um, one of the more complex ones. Let's try this one. Um, so, obviously you saw that, you know, you can obviously create uh, square tiled patterns. Um, I'm, I'm going to use this, which is a little bit more complex example. It's, you know, it's got a rectangular shape. And it's a little bit more complex pattern to see how you can create a tile out of this pattern. You basically um, draw it in Revit using detail lines in your view. Um, you don't really need to draw the boundary lines. I've only drawn them because I want to be able to pick the corners of the boundary. Uh, you can maybe create you know, lines like this for your corners. So you can snap to the corners if you, uh, at, you know, when you want, want to create the pattern. But um, anyways, that's not really a big deal of how you want to do it. So I'm just going to continue using the way that I did. Okay, so this, this number that I'm using is that um, for naming the pattern. So if you go under Manage and go under uh, Fill Pattern, you see under Model that I have all these patterns named here, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the 27. I'm going to create this over here. Okay, so um, oh, one more thing about this is that there are two field regions for the model patterns. Um, one is basically a zero, and the other one, I've copied this field region over and grabbed the, uh, the pattern and moved it 5,000 feet away. This helps me uh, to show you that this um, pattern has enough accuracy that it'll retain its shape over very, very large um, shapes, basically. Um, some of the pattern makers out there create patterns with less accuracy and you see that these uh, pattern lines start spreading apart um, when you basically move away from the origin of the pattern. But um, what I'm trying to say is that with Pyrovit Pattern Maker you, you get a really good high quality pattern uh, for both your detail and uh, model pattern, patterns basically. Okay, I'm gonna go and create this pattern anyway right now. So I'm gonna go create, uh, select all the all the pattern lines basically. I do not need to select the boundary lines because you pick the boundary for within the tool. And once I, um, I've done that, I'm going to go under edit, say make pattern, and then wait for the tool. Give it a name. I'm going to give it 27 obviously for this test pattern. You can pick detail or modern. We are making a model pattern. Um, you can uh, choose to create a field region for it after the pattern is complete. Um, these other options are all disabled. Initially I created these because I wanted to 
But as I was playing with the algorithm behind this, I thought I can give the user the option to adjust the angles automatically or pick the duct type and stuff like that. But these um, these never worked out the way I wanted to be, so they're all disabled for now. Um, don't really pay attention to them. You, you can you know export the pattern to a pattern file here or create it in your Revit model. I'm going to create the, uh, the um, pattern in the Revit model, and basically the, tools, uh, the tool asks you for the two corners of the, um, the tile area. So you click on here, one corner, and then go to the other one and click on the other corner. And after you know, a few seconds, it tells you that the pattern number or name, whatever is created or updated. Um, and that means that if I go here and say um, edit type for this pattern, and go and click the model, go and pick the 27, you'll see the pattern. Um, and it's good at 5,000 you know, feet. Um, one thing that's really important about this is that this is a model pattern. So it follows the whatever dimensions that you have drawn this, um, this pattern at. Um, model patterns are not view dependent. They're basically, as you know, they're, you know, they're model elements. They return their size. Uh, whatever view that you know you're changing the different scales and stuff like this so that's the main difference and you see that uh, so now I have to go to that 3d view and since we deleted that pattern I want to go to my imperial browser and go and I think I used well, I think I used default for that wall yeah so I'm gonna go and apply that this pattern to it again and everything is good to go and I can use it on the on the object one change that I did um, made past week to this tool is that you can, so if you have the pattern already existing with that name, and if you go and change stuff in it and recreate the pattern, basically, I'm going to reselect this stuff, um, and then say make pattern. and then give it the exact same name, and then that, and then create the pattern, it actually will update the existing one that you have instead of creating a new one. So see, everything that used that pattern actually got updated. We didn't have this feature before, and it was a little bit annoying whenever you wanted to, you know, play with this, uh, play with the pattern to make sure that you get the right scale and stuff like that. Um, but now, um, I think it's it's so much easier, and it gets updated everywhere, and you know, you don't have duplicates and stuff like that. Um, that, that is basically as far as the, uh, the model patterns go. The only thing that I should mention is that you can use curves. Um, Revit's internal system, internal API, has this feature that you can... Uh, let me see, actually, I can show it to you here now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the Revit API has in this internal feature that it, it would basically tessellate and um, approximate this curve with the lines, and I'm using that feature to grab these lines out of this curve to be able to create them here. If you really zoom in, you might be able to see that this curve is made of uh, made of little lines. Um, but anyways, the Pyre Pattern Maker can accept any type of curve that you can draw with um, the detail tool. So if I go here and you know draw, start drafting, you can use any of these curve types in uh, in your curve in your patterns, and you know everything would be fine. Uh, and the pattern maker would be able to resolve it. As you can see, this is good, this is good, this is not a black pattern, this is actually a very tiny tile, um, and it shows you that you know it's got a really good resolution at 5,000 feet even, you know, everything looks good. I have placed a bunch of um, images for different patterns that are standard when I grab them from the internet, um, so you can you know trace over them and create your own patterns and stuff like that in this test model as well. The other thing that I really wanted to show you, which is really important, is the drafting um, drafting patterns. One of the changes that I made to the Pattern Maker, the um, Make Pattern tool last week, was that the the tool now follows the scale of you whenever you're working on the detailed patterns. So at this view, I've drawn this um, pattern at this scale, uh, and it has basically created the same thing for me at the same scale. But if I change the scale of the view, so let's say half the size. Um, I'm sorry, double the size. Yeah, uh, this. So you see that the, the size of that thing, that pattern changes because they are detail views. They are their detail patterns. So they, you know, they follow the scale of the view. But whatever scale that you created on the first that view 
uh, is basically the defining size for that um, for that pattern. And it, the reason that I did that is that uh, previously you had to draw this. You had to basically convert all your dimensions for your pattern into that uh, that view scale uh, that scale that you wanted manually and draw really 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 tiny patterns. Um, that would make the tool a lot harder to use because the uh, tile is very, very small and the tool would take a long time to be able to resolve all the angles that are acceptable for those tiles and stuff like that. So now it's a lot faster, it almost uh, matches the speed of creating uh, model patterns basically. So both, both system model and detail work as fast as, you know, uh, at the same speed. Um, Anyways, uh, I want to show you maybe an example, another example of this. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy that over here. And let's say, let's see, what did I call this? I think that's called number one. Let me go here and say, fill patterns. Yeah, that's number one. Okay, let's create number two. And I want to make sure that you um, understand how this works. So um, the unit for this view, this is not an inch. Um, file, it's basically decimal, so this is a one by one tile. I'm going to draw um, a square that is half the size, and that's like that, and I'm going to move this to the center, okay. Let's draw another line. So I have a square that is, uh, that is half the unit by half the unit, right? So it's, that's the size. Um, so I'm going to draw that, and I'm going to create a pattern using this. Let me copy one of these actually over here as well, so we can create that one. Okay, so I'm going to select all these, and I'm going to say make pattern. I'm going to name this number two, since this is the number two. Zero two detail pattern, and say create the pattern. I'm going to pick the corner, and I'm going to pick the other corner. Okay, so that's updated. See, it's a lot faster. Now I can go here, and I can duplicate that. Call it number two, and use the number two drafting pattern, and it's good to go. See, it's, it's exactly the same size. So if this is this was let's say a one inch um, dimension, and you wanted to draw this as a half an inch, you make sure that at one eighth of an inch, the size of that pattern is half an inch. And obviously, if you change scale, let's go to half the size of that, it gets bigger. Why? Because this this scale is half the size of the one-eighth of an inch, so it needs to basically um, double the size of the pattern to make sure that on paper, whether you are an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, the same the pattern is the same size. Um, same thing goes to like quarter of an inch. It's double the size of eighth, it has to cut the size of the pattern by half to make sure that you know they're on the same size. But anyways, it gives you a really good, um, really easy way to make sure that the size of your pattern is accurate and you know works perfectly on your drawings. The last thing I want to show you is to how to export it to um, to a pan file. So let's just use, well, maybe let's use a more complex one. Um, I'm going to use this, say hit it, make pattern. Quickly, let's do um, test port detail. Let's say you can do model or detail anyone and then uh, pattern, pick the corners, and then pick the place that you want to place the pack file. I'm just going to put it on desktop, hit OK, and the pattern is exported now. And you go on your, and you go on the disk, and then the pattern file is here, and you can open it and see that it's been exported by Pyravid. It gives you the version of the Pyravid that's been exported on the date and time, and then the definition for all the, basically, pattern lines. Yeah. One um, one thing that I will add in the future, and um, some of the other pattern makers have, is that they have an optimization system that if you, for example, have a, let's copy one of these patterns, actually, let me off something, just for the sake of discussion. If you have a pattern that has um, lines like this, Let's say, let's say you have a pattern that has two lines like this. This is my tile, it's, you know, the rectangle is, rectangle is my tile, 
and these two are my pattern lines. Pirate Pattern Maker actually creates one definition line for each one of these um, each one of these lines. Some of the pattern makers are smart and they understand that these two lines are on the same axis, so they describe this shape as a pattern of basically as a line type for that line. I need to add this to um, to the Make Pattern tool to make it create and generate smaller uh, pattern definitions. I think it would help with performance and stuff like that. I haven't really actually tested it, but that's one of the things that will come um, will come in the future future updates.